want to talk with Pamela next. Oh. Hello there, Miss Pamela. Hello, Amanda. Pamela Transu. I, I, have, I have passed this woman in Tacoma for years at social events and always um, marveled at her elegance, her intelligence, and this sense of calm and strength that just kind of flows out of her. And when I heard that she was one of our iconic six this year, I thought, oh, this is my chance to have that one-on-one -on -one that I've always wanted to have with you that I never get when I'm saying hello to you at a silent bidding table. <laughs> so let's talk about for a moment um, what was your first 10 years like? And what stands out in your memory about that time in your life? Well, I think it's uh, safe to say that uh, no one would ever have predicted that I'd be doing what I've been doing the last uh, 20 or 30 years. Um, I grew up in a small uh, town in Idaho in a fairly low-income family, which uh, did not have um, College going, a college going culture. Uh, my father worked uh, in a stockyards and he worked at a flour mill. Uh, my mother uh, stayed at home. She took in sewing and uh, ironing and that sort of thing. Um, she didn't drive. Uh, and then when um, when I was seven, she died. Uh, and that was, um, you know, obviously a, a major event in my life. Um, I don't really remember very much about her because I was so young when that happened. Um, my father really had no idea about what parenting meant or any idea of how to go about it. So he didn't. <laughs> um, my oldest sister, almost immediately after my mother died, married my mother's doctor. And uh, so she, she was gone. My other sister was still around, but, but often would be away in other places, staying with other people. So when I was in second grade, I was spending a great deal of my time alone because my father really just wasn't around. So you were the youngest of three sisters. Yes. And here you have no mother now mm -hmm. and your surrogate mothers being your older sisters are off doing right. their own life. Dad is not equipped to raise you and also has his own grief process to go to go through and now here's Pamela by herself at the age of seven. Seven. Yeah, so I kind of raised myself, and uh, that I guess the good part of that was that I learned to be very self-sufficient and independent. The bad part of it was that I didn't have anybody to teach me anything about um, how to take care of myself or how to uh, interact, how to how to dress, anything about you know just appropriate manners and you know those kinds of things that normally are part of growing up in a family were, were not available to me and that caused a lot of problems because I, I was quite a quite a misfit really um, I didn't have appropriate clothing to wear and um, I had a very very poor um, diet because I only knew how to cook frozen fish sticks and frozen french fries <laughs> That was what I ate every day. <laughs> um, but anyway, I I, uh, I depended a lot on my teachers, you know, because I didn't have anybody else, uh, and that worked for a while. But it was as I as I started to get into um, you know fifth, sixth grade, it, it was problematic because I was the um, tallest kid and the smartest kid in the class and I have to tell you that if you combine that with being a girl it's um, at least in those days that was a fate worse than death yes. you know you definitely didn't want to be 
tall or smart. And I remember actually when I, by the time I got to junior high school, uh, I would pray every night that I would wake up in the morning and I would be short, um, dumb, and cute. <laughs> Which you are none of those things today, my dear. <laughs> well, I guess you are cute, but you're not sure of God. Good I, guess I, uh, I guess I'm grateful for that. <laughs> but uh, in any case, school was um, was tough because the teachers every year wanted me to skip a grade, and the school system would never allow any flexibility. So I was bored to death in school, just bored to death, and didn't fit in either, so by the time I was um, uh, in high school, I dropped out. Wow, okay, so I'm sitting here just shocked because that wasn't part of the story that I knew about. So, present emeritus of TCC dropped out of high school. Wow. Okay, and let's go back to something that I just heard you say. You had nobody to teach you any of the nuances of getting along with people, problem solving, which are my words I'm hearing, and how to make friends and long-lasting relationships. So you had to rely upon your teachers, and then you dropped out. What happened then? Well, I had to find something to do, and I happened to just hear about this group that sounded very interesting to me called uh, Up With People. So uh, I went to an audition and I was just blown away by the whole idea of what they were doing and, and the opportunity to travel uh, all over the country and even all over the world and perform. You know, that was just, uh, I couldn't think of anything that could be more thrilling than that. So that's what I that's what I did. I spent about a year and a half uh, traveling and singing with uh, up with people, and really that was a, a much better alternative for me than high school because I worked with people from about 80 different countries, from every conceivable culture, and uh, that opportunity to interact with such an incredible diversity of human beings was a fantastic education. So the downside to that is that we were expected to live by these uh, absolute uh, standards. Absolute honesty, absolute purity, absolute unselfishness, absolute love. Well, um, I wasn't able to do that. Well, how did you know how? No one had ever taught you. Well, yeah, and I just, uh, I, I assumed that everybody else was doing it, and I was the only one who, you know, wasn't getting it, wasn't getting this clear direction from above and, you know, all these other things. So I, I began to really doubt myself and to feel as if I was some kind of fraud. And uh, that, you know, that ultimately really uh, caused me to have a very kind of a serious breakdown. And uh, that sort of ended my my career with that uh, with that group. After you had your breakdown, did you did you go home and heal and take some time for yourself? Well, I didn't really have a home to go to. Uh, I had been living before I before I left before I dropped out of high school. I was I was living um, I was essentially homeless. I was living in my car. Um, I, when my father got a new car when I was um, about 12 or 13, and he gave me his old one, and that became my mobile home, and I would stay there in the car, uh, and, or I would stay, you know, a week or two with this person or that person. So I really had not had um, a home uh, for quite a long time because my father, uh, when he remarried, um, the situation was such that I wasn't really uh, a part of that that household. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I didn't really have any place to go home to. Uh, and that meant that um, I, I, I actually ended up uh, having a, a really, really grim um, time 
when I, when I got back, and one which uh, I barely survived. So uh, that, um, that got better when I got in my car and <laughs> drove to Seattle, uh, where I had a sister living in Bellevue with her children, and I was able to move in with them and kind of get stabilized um, until uh, her husband got a job in, in Southern California. So they moved, and I stayed on in the uh, vacant house because I didn't, I didn't really have anywhere else to go. And it was really vacant. You know, there was no, no furniture. Um, it was a very unusual to live in a house with no furniture. Um, <clears throat> But I had a job at the Seattle Credit Bureau, a minimum wage uh, job, uh, file, you know, as a file clerk, and that sort of kept me going. But I was, again, just bored to death. Um, and then someone, some wonderful person, I don't remember who it was, suggested that um, I take the civil service exam. So I did that and really aced it. And that got me a job at the post office where I was a special delivery messenger in Seattle and was able to uh, save half my salary and live better than I had ever lived in my entire life. Um, and I, just, I loved it. I loved working for the post office. Let's talk about, so you're at the post office and. First off, I, I sit here and just think, oh my gosh, where did you get, you've got great survival skills, but I'm really intrigued to know where you got the coping skills that I see in front of me. And education has played a part in this. So you're at the post office, how do you parlay a position at the post office to former president at TCC? <laughs> uh, well, uh, when I was working there, uh, I was working with a, another woman who had a master's degree, and she kept saying, you know, you really need to go to college, you know, you're, and I said, no, I couldn't do that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't survive, I wouldn't be able to handle it. But she kept insisting, and I finally decided that if I didn't ever try it, I would never know. And so I went to the University of Washington, where of course I was not admissible, because I didn't have a high school degree. So I was really fortunate in that I found someone who was willing to, um, let's see, how shall I put this? Bend the rules. <laughs> See it, your potential. I'm going to rephrase that. Okay. See thank your you. potential. <laughs> potential. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And let and let me in sort of on a provisional basis. And then I ended up. I, when I got my my grades, I thought they they made a mistake because you know I had all A's and I continued to to do that and actually graduated at the top of my class. But uh, it was just. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, I found out how much I loved learning, and I, I guess that the one thing I would say was that the saving grace for me, I think the thing that got me through all those times was, was books. And I talked about my mother dying when I was seven and how little I remember of her. One of the only memories I have is that she took me uh, to the library, to the public library, all the time. So I started reading, uh, I, I didn't go to kindergarten, but I was reading by the time I, I went to first grade. And I've read, you know, enormous numbers of books now, and that's what's taught me everything I know, in a way, about, how, about people from all different circumstances and about values and what's good and what's what's bad and and uh, you know how the complexity of human relationships, uh, all of that is for me something that I learned from books. 
And I'm very, I feel so grateful that I was introduced to books at an early age and that uh, I had that to rely on in terms of building my sense of who I wanted to be in the world. And that was really, really the key. For those 20-something year olds out there right now who are thinking, college is not for me. I can barely stand high school right now. What would you say to them? I would say to them uh, that they need to give it a try, that they need to be open to exploring uh, all the options that are available to them, uh, that they will find something, in most cases, that they will love and that they will want to pursue, and it will make them much happier and, and have lived much more fulfilled lives than if they forego that opportunity. Pamela, I, I, I sit here in front of you and I am just inspired because I'm also a little sad that you're not at the helm of TCC anymore. <laughs> I, and it's in good hands, that's not what I mean, but for anybody to walk up to you and say, I can't do this, or I'm afraid of going to school, or I'm not smart enough, or I, didn't, I don't have the upbringing to make me succeed, you are the perfect reflection of yes, you can. Thank you so much for sharing this.